Hello, everyone. Those who are watching, it's now 8 o'clock. I am Daisuke Tsuda. I'm a journalist. I'm here with a uh, mask. Uh, please excuse the fact that I have a ma the mask on. Today, the event title is Studio 202X, Cultural Policy in Times of Crisis. It is co-organized by the Goethe Institute Tokyo. Currently, there are talks from the government um, of the corona outbreak and its prevention, and the government has requested the public to uh, avoid unnecessary, unessential out outings. And because of this, um, sports events, cultural sectors have incurred a huge damage. And this has incurred uh, tens of billions of yen. And of course, we do not know what is to come in the future. We are afraid that the cult arts and culture will die. And amidst this situation, we are not seeing any uh, solution from the government. Today, we will discuss in two hours, we will look at the support that's been offered by other countries and the possible support that can be offered to the arts and culture. First, I'd like to introduce the guests, uh, playwright and theater director Oriza Hirata. Mr. Hirata has spoken out about the reframement amidst the corona outbreak. And you have also um, held uh, performances um, with in the consideration of prevention of the coronavirus. My job is to consider which events to hold and which performances not to hold. So maybe you could share your ideas and thoughts surrounding this. Our next guest is uh, Kensaku Fukui. He's a lawyer. Hi. I'm sorry, this looks like a masked performance, um, but we need to social distance 1.5 meters. Um, we'll d we are doing uh, prevention measures to uh, avoid inf uh, infection. Um, Mr. Fukui is in, um, very, he's famous in the en entertainment law. He has been a consulting lawyer for many uh, creators and supported many figures in the enter entertainment industry. He has spoken widely, extensively about this topic. Um, he has also actively spoken out about uh, cancellations, how to deal with cancellations of events. And today he, we will ask about uh, his activities as a supporter of people in the arts and what the situation is there is like there. But before we go into our discussion, we want to look at what kind of cancellations have happened in the last two months. I've prepared a PowerPoint presentation. So if we could just look at the timeline leading up to now, uh, if we could have that on the screen, please. February 26, the official announcement from the government. Uh, Minister, Prime Minister Abe calls for a two-week refrain from hosting domestic sporting and cultural events. Uh, this is a two-week refrain. And after this announcement, this request, uh, Perfume um, canceled their live performance and from their lots of large-scale events were canceled. So this was what kind of triggered the cancellations. But I think the point here was that it was a two-week refrain and right now it's April 1st. So it's actually been a month already now that people have had to cancel or postpone events. The next day, on the 27th, Abe called for temporary school 
closures for elementary and junior high schools from March until across the country from March 2nd. And uh, there were also criticism that uh, closing down all of the uh, the schools was a bit too much, but uh, this is, is not directly uh, related to culture events, but uh, this relates to uh, the topic at hand in terms of uh, graduation ceremonies and things like that. And also, it kind of it was it created this tension because uh, people felt that we should, people shouldn't be doing cultural events when schools are being closed. February 29th, uh, this was a significant event. Uh, the bad Tokyo Jihan restarted its activities after eight years, and they held a live performance at Tokyo International Forum. Um, this received much criticism. Uh, so this was a significant date, February 29th, because it was the day that they suspended their activities for Tokyo Jihan, and they felt strongly about uh, going through with this performance. The next day, March 1st, Tokyo Jihan also performed on this day. But this also received much criticism, and they were due to have more shows, but on March 4th, they decided to cancel all of the remaining shows of their tour. This relates to the theater sector as well as arts and culture. This had a huge impact on the sectors. Uh, Hideki Noda, artist director of the Tokyo Metropolitan Art Space, uh, released an open letter saying that performances should be carried out on the premise that all measures are taken to prevent infection and that there's an understanding from the audience and mainly people in the theater sector express their support and solidarity. Uh, Mr. Riz, uh, Hirata, you also showed your support uh, towards this opinion letter. So this shows how much tension uh, there was or how much alarm there was in the theater sector regarding the corona outbreak. This is also a significant event. Uh, the government's memorial service for the Great East Japan earthquake was officially cancelled on March 6th. So each prefecture in the Tohoku region also followed suit and either postponed or cancelled or limited the scale of the, uh, the, the memorial services in order to curb the corona infection outbreak. So the question was how long is this requirement going to go on for? It had been two weeks uh, since the request for uh, cancellation of this moment. So they were saying the request was up until March 19th, up until they had an expert meeting the next day. Abe Minister calls a cancellation of events in the next 10 days. This is coinciding with the request for voluntary restraint until the 19th. So for 10 days, it would be until March, March 20, 20th, which uh, ended up not being the case. And this also relates to the refraint of events. They died and enacted a bill to amend the act on special measures against uh, new infection diseases, making the government uh, capable of declaring an emergency state. Um, later, Abe held a press conference following the passage of the special measures law. So because it, it would limit, this would limit uh, hu basic human rights, people were skeptical of, um, of the situation, but Abe stated that declaring a state of emergency is not necessary just yet. But the Association of Medical Practitioners are also rec are already requesting for a declaration of state of, of emergency, so it is, it is ha um, bound to happen any time soon. 
Given the situation, the arts and cultural sector uh, don't know when they can restart activities, and they've much loss has been incurred. So I think in terms of political action, this is one of the major events that happened. The Japan Association of Classical Music Presenters submitted a request to the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, and the Minister of Economy, Trade, and Industry for compens compensation for losses incurred by cancellation and postponement, and the estimated damage was over 2.4 billion yen. March 19th, uh, people were hoping that the request for refrain would be resolved, but at the government's committee of experts held a meeting to review disease control and called for a continued restraint on large-scale events. So this was also a notable event on March 22nd at the Saitama Super Arena. The K1 World Grand Prix was held with an audience of 6,500 people, and people were afraid that this would result in a large cr cluster that would trigger uh, infections and the spread of the coronavirus. The organizer, of course, have stated that they have taken uh, precautions to prevent uh, in, uh, infection, but there is a limit to that when, in it, uh, when it's an event of this kind of scale. And the Saitama prefectural governor asked for, requested a refrain, but the organizers really had no choice but to go forward with this event because uh, much loss would be incurred with the, con the cancellation of such a large-scale event. The next day, March 23rd, Tokyo Governor Yurika Koiko uh, mentioned the possibility of a lockdown. She requested that people avoid using live music venue, venues and gyms as well as holding events. She made a very important statement as for compensation, I think. There is some debate as to whether or not it's really right to invest taxpayer money. Uh, she, so she suggested that there's no intention of offering any monetary con compensation, compensation, although they asked for a request for refrainment March 24th, Hiroshi Yanai, president of Pia Corporation, who attended a government hearing, pointed out that some uh, 81,000 events have been postponed or canceled due to request, for, and an economic loss of 175 billion had already been incurred. So if this continues on for two, three months, uh, this much loss has been incurred already in a month. So we're, this is going to build up as uh, more time passes. So this is really a critical situation that we're facing right now. March 24, the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics was postponed by almost a year. So this is one was one of the lar the most large scale ca uh, postponement of an event. March 25th, Tokyo Governor Koike requested Tokyo citizens to refrain from going out on the weekend. So of course, events cannot be held. 20th, 29th, 20th, 29th, uh, if hardly any events were held, I believe, because of this request. Uh, Tokyo, Kanagawa, Chiba, Saitama, Yamanashi also uh, followed suit and requested for uh, the people to refrain from unnecessary non-urgent outings. March 26th, DJ Nobu met with the Chief Cabinet Secretary Suga and other lawmakers and submitted a petition for a relief grant. So this was a, a, an internet petition. Uh, and he started the Save Our Space. There's about 300,000 people that signed this petition. I think this is like the fastest rate that people have signed for a petition. March 
27th, Ryohei Miyata, Commissioner of the Agency for Cultural Affairs, issued a message. He said, we, we must not turn off the lights of Japanese culture and art. I would like to take the lead in supporting arts and culture more than ever in order to over overcome the corona outbreak. However, he offered no specific support or compensation at all, and disappointing many people involved in the arts and culture. March 28th, Prime Minister Abe stated at a press conference um, about compensation. This was an, an answer to Shogo Egawa's question. He acknowledged that it would be difficult to compensate for council events with tax money, and so he suggested that he would respond with benefits. But there are there's no detailed um, plans that have been disclosed of whether to go about the support. Monday on the 30th, Governor Koike had an emergency press conference asking young people to refrain from going to karaoke and live music venues. So she pointed out specific industries to refrain. And yesterday, Saver Space held a press conference reporting that 300,000 signatures were collected and many cultural figures were in favor of it. So first of all, we could ask Mr. Herata uh, just one word. So we can look at this from different perspectives. I think we need to look at this from different perspectives. You talked about the Prime Minister Abe um, at the press conference, but before that, um, Koike um, also the go to governor of Tokyo, Koike, um, also requested refrain from holding events bigger than 500 people. And that was the measure also taking place in different parts of the world as well, in Europe. And so I think that was the common um, idea to refrain holding events bigger than 500 people. But the next day, um, Prime Minister Abe said a very abstract, state a very abstract statement that you should refrain from basically any um, holding any type of events. And for us, working in the field of performing arts, um, you know, you consider holding an event um, the big, um, in a large size event is the definition varies according to the people who are organizing the event. Some people think more um, people more than 500 is big, but some people might think that more than 50 is big. And also in New York, um, they came up with the idea of having um, maximum person of 50 people, including the staff members. So not only the audience members, and but it was nice because it was a very concrete number. It's it was a very um, clear measurement that you you could think about uh, how to hold the event. So that was the one of the difficult things. That, um, and the second one is that the um, live houses were pointed out as one of the clusters at the very early stage. And um, in television, sometimes people refer to it as live bars, in, um, offering food and drinks. So it included different types of live houses and having different bands and performing on the stage or having different types of food offering. And that's different from live bars or live houses and um, doing classical music with a very um, different setting with the audience looking just uh, in front to the uh, stage. So I think um, more clear measures were required when before they stated that the live houses are clusters. And in terms of ventilation, um, Japan has a very strict ventilation syst um, system and, and regulations. And um, my theater, Agora, um, also go through a very strict checkings and from the uh, office and regulations. 
and um, by the health center. And so if you think, if you just talk about it in one group, it makes it difficult to differentiate different types of uh, places. And they also, the government also talked about uh, coming out with three different sectors. Um, dense clusters and less dense clusters and places where not, no one is infected. And they were trying to come up with regula uh, regulation advices and guidelines that if you have, n if you are holding events that have no one infected and with the viruses, you can start holding events. So and Japan is a small country, but the country is very um, long physical and um, in a shape, so it, the situation is very different um, in each area. But if the uh, head of the government or the leaders keep saying abstract things and giving very abstract advices, it's very hard to um, make the decisions. So I, then I think it becomes important for us to think of what kind of things we can do and also the, um, how these arts and culture institutions are essential to the public. So, so may if if we are on we, uh, if we are advised or if we are suggested or uh, proposed that we do get some kind of um, compensation of like eighty percent um, income security or income, you can you can hold the events, but um, you know you need to give up uh, everything. If we don't any we don't have any promises from the government. So um, we are just asked and requested to refrain from everything, but the refrain and support needs to come as a set. And in order for Japan to um, function as a as a normal, um, as a normal um, country, then we need more specific advices and guidelines. So, um, Hukui, um, you can maybe um, comment on the uh, things that you've been looking at for this past month. Hello, my name is Hukui. So, I'd like to point out three points. First, the loss incurred, the scale of loss incurred the scale of the damage incurred. So from the early early March, from when the refrainment started, the public culture institutions uh, conducted a poll. And at that point, many of the public halls, uh, events, the rate of uh, cancellation was 90-something percent. I think for the large-scale ones, I think most of them were canceled. So for other genres, industries, for example, restaurants, so this is the cancellation postponement rate is significantly high. And so the ticket fee is most of it is reimbursed, which means that there is zero income. But the, the organizers also have to cover uh, very expensive costs, and the, so a lot of damage is incurred. So if so, for this uh, applies for small scale um, theaters, uh, hundred million yen. For uh, large scale ones, a uh, hundred million yen. Uh, really, really large scale uh, stadiums is a, a huge money, about hundred million. And so insurance cannot cover this. So many of them go bankrupt or individuals um, have to shoulder m a lot of debt that they cannot repay and their lives are literally destroyed. So this is the reality that we're facing right now. So in this period of crisis, I think this is the situation at hand. That's the first point. The second point is that uh, the situation is the same for other countries as well, but 
uh, many have not asked, requested a, re a refrainment. They have imposed a uh, refraint, and they, but at the same time, they've offered uh, support for live music venues, for uh, called this cultural sector, cultural uh, institutions, uh, the United States, Germany, France. Um, they have taken large-scale support schemes. And the one thing they have in common is that they bring up the importance of the culture and arts. Uh, they, they, the Minister of Culture of Germany have stated that the arts is an ind indispensable vital part of our lives. And so many heads of the states have, have mentioned this. So they are not only asking people to uh, refrain, but they have also willing to uh, support. And it's th there's also the understanding that what is vital to their lives, arts and culture, is very much at risk. But in Japan, on the other hand, no support schemes have been presented. So that's the second point of this current situation. The third point, as Mr. Harata has pointed out, so because it is a request for a refraint, there, the logic is there, there, therefore there is no support. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand, are opposed to, because if you strongly demand a refraint, it has to be for the good of the public. So of course it, it, it relates to wel the welfare aspect of public operations. So of course it depends on the genre, but if it's a contemporary theater or hall, uh, the ventilation restrictions are very strict, of course, and in the auditorium, people aren't talking. So why is it restaurants and bars? Why is it uh, pachinko parlors? Why are they able to continue operations? And why is it us, the cultural industry, that is shut down? So many people that's involved in the arts and culture, they really can't understand that. But but they are willing to cooperate if it is going to re reduce the risk. So the situation really is that the, those who cooperated has incurred a lot of loss. Artists don't really want to say things about other sectors, so they're holding back a little bit, but at the same time, they are in a situation where they can't do anything. So they started to get frustrated because other sectors are able to continue operations where they can't. So this situation in society right now is that a, a limited group of people is having to stop operations while others aren't. Of course, uh, people don't bring that up given the situation, but at least because they have cooperated voluntarily to this degree, at least there could be some sort of expression of appreciation and even though they have voluntarily cooperated, there's no support. It's their responsibility. And then when it's imposed, somehow there's a support. So logically, that really doesn't make sense for a lot of people. Given the scale of the damage incurred, and I think the value that people place on the arts and culture is different. And regarding this reframement, how it's dealt with is uh, different. So those are the things that I want to bring up first. On Monday, uh, there are three mayors in Berlin, and we spoke to the Senator for Culture Europe, Culture in Europe of Berlin, Mr. Klaus Lederer. So, uh, but we discussed many things, including the topics that you brought up now. So, in Japan, so there's a reportage of how um, comprehensive the support and the cultural policy is in terms of arts and culture, but um, none of the reports have covered uh, in great detail of what these are. So I, uh, we'd like to show about a 30-minute video of this interview. Nice to meet you. My name is Daisuke Tsuda, and I'm a journalist. I'd like to go ahead and jump straight into the interview. So first of all, I understand that in the city of Berlin and across Germany, various cultural institutions such as movie theaters, museums are closing down. Many events are being canceled. 
Are the closures a request for cooperation from the federal government or the state government, or is it a legal requirement? Can you tell us what the situation is in regards to the closures? Germany has a federal system, so the same rules don't apply for every state. Berlin is a city state. Here, large public concert halls and theaters were asked to close on March 11th. And two days later, on March 13th, all cultural institutions, public and private, including libraries, music schools, art galleries, and museums, memorial halls, opera houses, and theaters, and suspended their activities. It was an action taken in response to the legal restrictions imposed by the ordinance. But on the 11th, it was still a request. But not only public, but also many private facilities compiled, complied. And it was on the 13th that all the facilities were closed under the legal regulations of the audience. Was there already an existence ordinance under which the closure could be imposed, or does this mean that a new ordinance has been enacted on the basis of an emergency? And it's our first time to um, face this kind of type of pandemic. Um, but we do have this um, uh, we did have this um, disease protection act which is the legal basis on which state and local authorities can decide how to deal with the spread of infectious diseases at its um, risk levels and on March 13th, we issued an ordinance interve intervening in public lives. This ordinance may be updated depending on how the situation surrounding the pandemic will unfold, and which means we'll um, enforce a new ordinance, which we have not had in the past, but that's because we've never experienced a pandemic of this level in the past. For the people involved in uh, music or theater, in other words, those that are part of the arts and culture industry, I think it was a big, very big decision in the sense that their source of incomes will be cut off. Were there any objections um, from those in the industry? At a government meeting on March 11th, um, virologists were called in to give a briefing on the mechanism of the coronavirus. We then went back to the exclusive office and discussed with Senate officials on what this could mean for cultural institutions. We then held um, conference calls with the um, orchestra and opera house intendants, which led to the decision to start with the closure of larger halls. At the time, however, it was still a legally an unenforceable request, but all the facilities decided to close accordingly. On March 13th, we held a meeting at a very large venue with the intendants of all kinds of cultural institutions. This was to um, and this was to discuss how to um, curtail the spread of the virus. And we spent half an hour discussing in great detail what the consequences would be if we weren't able to prevent contact between people and how we could stop the spread of the virus. Discussion took about two hours. And after the discussion, I came to the conclusion that there was no other way to protect the health of, of our citizens. Of course, I knew that this would have serious conse consequences for the facilities, both city run and private. We know that both public and private institutions which we requested closure 
make their income for artists and audience coming into contact. So this was not an easy decision. But I think in the end, everyone agreed that this was the right decision. In that thorough discussion on March 11th and the 13th, in which everyone in the end um, came to an agreement regarding the final decision, did the need for compensation by the city state of Berlin came up? Um, in regarding the um, compensation, there was a question as to whether if an ordinance was enacted under the Infectious Diseases Prevention Act, any loss incurred would automatically be compensated by the local government. In Germany, if an individual is infected with the virus and is unable to work because of quarantine, their income is compensated by the health department or the federal ministry of finance. However, when the competent authorities place restrictions on public life for reasons like this case, this does not mean that that the provisions of the Preventive Act automatically apply. In other words, not everyone is entitled to compensation. If an individual is infected, they are eligible to apply for compensation, but otherwise they will not be compensated. However, those who work in the public sectors are, in a way, in a privileged position. They won't be um, struggling with money anytime soon because we are financially supporting it. It's not like we are going to be behind on payments next week or the weeks after. But for private institutions, the situation is different. The first thing we discussed with public institutions is to take measures such as downsizing operations and reducing working hours. The federal government, in return, guarantees 60 percent of the salary. And we suggested that the city of Berlin would cover the remaining amount with the public funds. But the real problem is not the public institutions, but the fact that the private cultural institutions are in crisis. They're not s subsidized with, uh, by the city of Berlin at all. Clubs, music venues, small theaters, cabaret venues, and private galleries. These industries have been forced to close their facilities and face revenue cuts. If the existing support scheme, such as basic living support for solo self-employed workers or freelancers provided by the federal government or the city of Berlin is inadequate, these institutions will be left in a very difficult position. And you were um, you were talking about the compensation of um, free mid, um, amount of time. So maybe you can tell me more about the discussion taking place. Um, currently, there is no such specific program in place. Now, at the federal level, the first thing we have done is to decide on a general economic relief package. This means easy access to loans and employment benefits. If you are forced to stay at home, 60 percent of your salary will be compensated by the federal government. The federal government decided last week that small and micro enterprises with less than 10 employees can apply for an allowance of 15,000 uh, euros for the next six months. However, this is for business continuity purposes only and does not guarantee an individual's livelihood. It's even tougher, especially when it comes to individual artists and groups. 
Many solo artists and freelancers have nowhere else to work、um, besides initiating their own projects. In other words, the indi individuals and work go together. So, as the city government of Berlin, starting last Friday, we decided to compensate the freelancers 5,000 euros over six months. This scheme has already started, and the payments have just begun. And probably 200,000 to 300,000 people will take advantage of this support system. And this is for people who, for example, ended up not receiving payment due to cancellations, had to close their gallery, or did not receive the fees for services that they have already delivered, such as giving lessons or performing. There are limits to federal aid for artists. So, for individual artists and small businesses, the city of、um, Berlin provides a small umbrella to protect them from the rain, so to speak. However, the bigger problem is that institutions with 20 to 30 or Or 40 to 100 employees have no income. Many of them will be unable to repay their debts in the future. They may be able to hold out this week or two or three weeks or for another two months or so. We don't know. The problem is that for business、uh, for these businesses, there's not much point in getting loans. It's not that hard to borrow, but you have to pay it back eventually. Cultural projects just don't generate an yearly revenues of 10 percent or 15 percent. Cultural projects usually come out even with their income and expenditure. Artists and businesses may take out loans, but they not be able to repay them. In other words, even if they manage to withstand the corona crisis, they will not be able to repay their debt afterwards. But we have to look for some sort of solution in this field when it comes to support. Since no clear policy has been issued at the highest level of German federal government regarding this, we cannot expect that this will provide support. And let me ask two things:、um, the Berlin state's insurance of 5,000 euros in the span of six months you mentioned about 200,000 people would take advantage of. Is this limited to freelancers in the arts and culture, or does it cover a range of professions? One more thing:、uh, Spiegel reports that the mayor of Berlin is considering、um, 15,000 uh, 15, euro aid for the self-employed. Has this been decided? Um, please tell us more about that. And basically, this compensation scheme is for freelancers, the self-employed, and micro enterprises. There are currently 200 to 30, 300,000 people trying to receive this compensation, but they're not all necessarily from the cultural industry. However,、um, one should bear in mind that the situation in Berlin is special.、Um, there are many self-employed people, especially in Berlin, such as artists and self-employed persons, as well as micro enterprises with five to ten employees involved in the creative industry who need this support. However, unlike the federal level, the city of Berlin is trying to provide support specifically for this particular situation. In other words, and instead of separating private, private,、uh, private and public institutions, our stance is: if you are in a tough situation, especially when you are an individual artist, we want to help. Therefore, the support we provide in Berlin is not necessarily specific to the artist, but we can say that it is established in consideration of the problems faced by artists. The application for the 5,000 euro allowance started last Friday, and it is smoothly and promptly being paid to all small businesses. And solo operation self-employed persons can reapply after six months. 
Businesses with a small number of employees can employ uh, can apply after three months. Um, 15,000 euro is the support package put forth by the federal government, which is not intended for those in urgent need of assistance. And if the 5,000 euros provided by Berlin is not enough to continue the business, you can apply for this federal compensation separately. And we are also looking at ways to support cultural businesses on a slightly larger scale. And this is for theaters and, um, and clubs. We're continuing to discuss that. What Mayor Mueller announced last week is basically what I've just described, which is what we've been already been doing in Berlin since last Friday. A few hundred thousand have applied within 24 hours of starting. Does the 5,000 euro support for freelancers also apply to foreign nationals working in Berlin, for example? Yes, of course. There's no point in doing otherwise. Berlin is a diverse cosmopolitan city, and if non-German artists are excluded from this support program, that is unthinkable. And it goes against the principle of supporting the arts. In other words, we coexist with art and we are influenced by different things, which is how we exist. So artists who are not German citizens are also important in Berlin and they need our support. In Germany, there's a debate on the other hand, the arts and culture are not asking for any so there's a question of whether why the arts and culture is um, receiving this uh, particular um, there's a lot of bashing criticism on whether why specifically are the arts and culture deserve to have this specific support of course, in, even in Germany, there's a debate as to whether this is really necessary. The Germans say that you can earn bread with art. This means that anyone involved in the arts has to be prepared to not make any decent money. This is the idea that art is a pastime, a luxury for the limited few, and art is useless for society. Certainly that's th that's the way some people think. But on the other hand, the arts and culture are not asking for any kind of special treatment. What we are requesting is that arts and culture be treated equally, equally just like any other industry. During the economic crisis, the Lehman shock in 2018-2009, there was much talk about maintaining systems. Take banks, for example, the economy can't function without them circulating, circulating money. In open and democratic society, the arts and culture are intrinsically important, absolutely necessary. I can't imagine a modern nation without arts and culture. So I would like to see it being treated just like any other industry and treated decently. I also want people to consider the unique situation surrounding this industry. What I mean by unique is that it's not possible to make a large profit, at least not in Berlin institutions. There are very few institutions with large profits, and most of them are able to make men's meet on a shoestring basis. And of course, many of the people involved in the industry are working under very difficult conditions. There are very few people employed and working in public cultural institutions if you look at the whole industry. So my hope is that this emergency relief measure will urge us to look at the particularities of the arts and culture sec cultural sector. And in the end, even if the coronavirus is defeated, we can't have a situation where the art and culture is defeated as well with the coronavirus. Earlier you said that this is just 
Uh, an emergency measure and that you'll be needing the next round of support. However, there's talk that neither Germany nor Berlin has decided on a specific program yet. But looking at the global pandemic situation, I think there's a good chance that the coronavirus infection will become a medium to long-term issue on a global scale. Now, under these circumstances, the next policy program is going to be very important, and although it has not been decided yet, has there been any discussions about how to go about it? At the moment, artists and cultural institutions are moving very creatively. We're trying to figure out, they're trying to figure out how to fi digitally bring activities to the people. In the spirit of solidarity and mutual aid, artists and small businesses launched an internet platform in Berlin a week ago called Berlin Alive. It's a digital event calendar that allows anyone to stream their activities from home. Those who see it can show their solidarity by hitting the donate button. And in this way, you can support the artists through donations. Other than that, we don't know how this pandemic will spread at the moment and how our lives will be limited in the next two, three weeks, a month. However, we do need to keep in mind perhaps there are some cultural activities that could soon be resumed, even with limited human contact. Others may take more time to restart. However, it will be some time before 1,500 people can sit in a big hall together and enjoy Verdi's opera, for example. Last week, we laid out our initial support for those who were hit the hardest by the coronavirus outbreak. But the next step is how to keep our cultural institutions from going bankrupt. The question is whether they can survive for one, two, three or four months with a subsidized loan and whether we can support them until they can expect to make an income. These are things we're thinking about now in Berlin. I don't know if this has been considered at the federal level. However, I will continue to request that was that we as a city and as a state not be left by the federal government to fight on our own. Berlin is the cultural capital of Germany and by extension of Europe. But there are other mid to small scale cities with cabaret venues, live music venues, galleries that have the same problem. We will definitely offer our support as much as we can, but we will ask, be asking for understanding and necessary measures to do so from the government. We're running out of time, but I just want to ask two more questions. In Germany, where regional sovereignty is established under the federal system, I believe cultural policies differ from state to state. Could you? Tell us about the basic principles of Berlin's cultural policy and how you support artists on a daily basis. Berlin is a special city in a way. There is no big manufacturing industry to begin with, and it is not a financial center. There are this is also not a place where the headquarters of corporate giants gather. Berlin is a diverse city with many different centers all over the place, from large cultural institutions to small uh, institutions with attractive groups and solo artists. There's a very wide range of cultural activities. The special charm of Berlin is that the art scene is so varied and creative, and that's why it attracts so many people, and it makes it attractive for people that live in Berlin as well. The key is to support the abundance of ideas generated by creative people, to ensure that the program can continue in times of crisis, and to support the economy to keep people active in this corona crisis. And also importantly, where the survival of cultural institutions are at stake, 
maintaining, supporting them for the next couple of months. We're working on it with all our might right now. I don't know what's going to happen in the next two or four months. Every week we are faced with something new. We need to think about new measures by looking at where we need support and where we need to provide it on a long-term basis. And of course, in the German federal system, each state governs cultural culture separately, but in times of crisis such as this one, which is unprecedented in German history, and for the sake of culture and how we benefit from, from it in our daily lives, and also for the sake of democratic freedom, I would expect the cultural industry to at the least receive the same level of support as the giant industries such as manufacturing services and finance. You mentioned that the state of Berlin is setting up an internet, internet platform where artists can express themselves and viewers can donate. I would like to know the name of the service and also is the service only for the citizens of Berlin who can register for theater or music projects or so to share with people with other on the service or is it available to all German citizens? Uh, the name is Berlin Alive with no space. This gives you a glimpse into the creative activities of Berlin's citizens. Under these circumstances, we can share our activities not only with the citizen citizens of Berlin, but also to those who are interested all over the world. Originally, it was set up for the cultural sector of the city of Berlin, but other platforms, similar platforms, are now being created with similar aims, and I've heard that the Goethe Institute is also interested. My last question, can you tell us why, for Germans and the people of Berlin, why culture and the art is so important? In my opinion, culture is essential for the development of democracy and society, especially in times of crisis. If you mean Germany as a whole, there's another answer. Historically, Germany has always been considered a civilized nation and has respected poets and thinkers. Apart from the critical and creative capacity of each poet and thinker, thinkers that have shaped the self-perception of the country that is Germany. I think that's why culture is regarded so highly in the awareness of the Germans. In practical life, I think, as in other cultures, culture and arts need special protection. Thank you much for answering my questions in such great detail. Thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. Please take care, people of Tokyo. Last October, I visited Tokyo, and it was a wonderful city. Thank you so much. Uh, we can let, let's get through this crisis. Um, so it's very different when you compare the situation in Japan and Germany. So we can um, develop discussion of, um, about this. I want to hear comments from two speakers, but maybe we can jump in to invite another guest. And because there is a person who, um, who a politician serving in the house um, uh, in, as a diet member, um, to be online on Zoom to share his thoughts and tell us um, what the situation is like in the diet. Then maybe we can go on to having discussions. So um, let's take a a few minute break so the, before we switch to the Zoom online talk.
So we would like to resume. We have Mr. Manabu Terata on online, who is a politician serving in the House of Representatives as a Diet member. So maybe he can share with us on what, what kind of discussion he's having in the Diet. Um, member Te uh, Terata, uh, Mr. Terata was also involved um, actively in the uh, when we were discussing the low regu uh, low regulating adult entertainment business. So maybe you can talk about uh, activities and actions that you take on right now, and also your comments and thoughts about the Corona situation. Hello. Um, I've been doing uh, working serving as a diet member on the House of Representatives for 15 years, and as you introduced, uh, I was working hard to um, am uh, admit the low regulating adult entertainment business because I'm a big um, f fan of clubbing uh, clubs, and we were doing working on the working hours of the people working there. And um, in this coronavirus situation, these places like clubs and um, live music venues and bars and restaurants are picked up. And last week, I love going clubbing and club music. Uh, I often go there even as a diet member. And I have many friends there working in clubs and organizers and DJs. I saw them suffer and I wanted to be of help. And as a, um, there's a DJ that I like to listen to, DJ Nobu, and I had a chance to talk with them and discuss uh, what we can do and what kind of help I can offer. And I, so I contacted um, the Chief Cabinet Secretary uh, Suga and to talk about different, um, so I talked to him directly to talk about possibilities of going over um, this kind of situation. So what was the reactions from Mr. Suga? Um, I didn't think that he would have time to talk to me, but um, he responded very quickly. Um, I saw it as a very positive reaction. So, um, you, also, um, you were also involved in the Save Our Space movement, uh, which to seek relief grants in order to close your cultural institutions for infection prevention purposes. And um, people were uh, people in different sectors like music, theater, and sports, and other arts and culture sectors are affected and they are involved in the movement. And this was um, this petition movement was led by DJ Nobu, but it wasn't limited to DJs and clubs, but it was more open to other art victors. Yeah, that's what it meant to do. But it's also a gathering who are involved in the situation. So the people who acted um, actively in the petition were actually practitioners and um, cl um, club organizers, DJs, um, people involved in lighting and sound and so on. But I think they wanted to invite more people. And my question is that um, why is for politicians so difficult to talk about compensation um, together with the refrain? And I think um, they don't think they don't think they're important because I don't think they saw they they understand what how they manage the how they manage to um, the, um, the monetizing. And um, they uh, they only offered um, interest-free loans when they said that they're gonna save us from going bankrupt. Uh, that was the only thing they could offer. And so I ask why on um, all the clubs and nightclubs, um, why can they get um, why can they get free money? So that was the question. 
Uh, there are many reasons that people um, they they say that um, you know for health purposes um, they have to pick up on clusters and they have to ask those clubs and those areas to close down and. I thought that it would be easy for the politicians to understand if they talk about the taxes, where they pay the taxes. But um, it's it's a very obvious thing that the politicians need to do. Reframe and support should come as a set. Hi, I'm Hukui. I'm the I'm the lawyer. Nice to meet you. I was uh, listening to the um, deputy mayor of Berlin talking, and um, I liked how he was um, organized and and thinking in different steps. So he talked about how to support a very small scale and solo employed self-employed individuals. And there, the support was 1.8 million yen in Japanese yen uh, for individuals, and city of Berlin individually uh, trying to come up with an equal amount of support uh, separate from the federal government, and they're trying to save their um, their basic life. But on top of that, um, they are offering different um, support for those um, small-scale the theaters, entertainment venues, and organizations, which is ha having employees under 100 um, employees, and they are about to go bankrupt. And if they go bankrupt, uh, uh, this, the ripple uh, effect will happen. And so they are thinking in different steps to uh, support a different size of theaters. So the large scale theaters will be covered from the federal government, but the city supports a small scale. And they support um, not only their life, but the well welfare and well of cultural well because the you know, the well of culture will will go dry. So I thought um, this was a very clever way of thinking because in different countries, maybe they come up with uh, support or allowance um, to um, support the minimum welfare and life. But some country, uh, do you think Japan only concentrate on discussing that kind of allowance, the minimum allowance? In terms of schedule, um, we, ha we are having discussions. So um, the, the party, the LDP party, has to come up with ideas, and the government will be able to discuss um, different measures, including the budget. And like, um, you, we, I am aware of the proposals um, by the LPD, but it's very abstract and it's very hard to, um, because they do, they are aware that um, they do write down that they need uh, support for uh, certain type of sectors, but the statement itself doesn't really um, clearly define what cultures, cultural sector means to them or what cultural, what kind of cultural sectors they are referring to. So maybe um, they are thinking of um, having com um, offering compensations for the temporary use, but um, just that's for the temporary use to get over this um, current situation. As um, in, from the conversation that I had with um, Chief and um, Cabinet Secretary Suga, and it has to, he thinks he has to have a balance 
between different sectors and different、um, fields. So、um, he, I got the impression that he cannot just support the cultural sector because.、Uh, So it's、um, it's、uh, it's spoken separately from giving out allowances to the general public of like hundred thousand yen, for example. But、uh, I think they come up with a different system. So I think、uh, things will progress. Maybe next week. So I'm hoping to have、uh, further discussions regarding this, and hopefully I can interview again. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. I know you're very busy. So ideally, I would wanted to ask your impressions about Mr. Letter's video, but because of time issues, I had to.、Uh, Go on to the next agenda, but it was very interesting because we could see a comparison between your input and、um, that what we just heard. So, of course, the request for refinement,、uh, because we co co cooperated,、uh, the logic of requesting for support is kind of a little bit difficult. So, nightclubs,、um, high-end club nightclubs,、um, it would go on to the discussion whether. These places need to be、uh, supported. So where do we do all the the line? So for the example in Germany, arts and culture protecting the arts and culture, we need to provide a platform where people can keep on expressing themselves. So Berlin is very much the, in compared to Hamburg, the private sector is very strong, and in Japan, overall. Private small theaters, clubs, music halls have supported Japanese culture, and so public halls came later. It, ca it only came up in the the past twenty years. So th the private sector that supported the Jap Japanese culture, if that kind of crumbles, then it's the whole cultural sector is going to collapse. So we need some sort of support for the the private sector in that sense. I think it's similar in that case, in that the private sector has supported culture both in Tokyo and Berlin, but for the citizens, the way they think, in Europe, theater is kind of like a church, meaning that it supports public life. It's an important place, an institution for public life, but we don't have that kind of perception in Japan. It's a place for leisure, so it's for People that really like this、uh, sector, and and for some people it doesn't really matter if if it's、um, around or not. And I teach、uh, public management in universities, but theater is the same as the equivalent as schools and hospitals.、Uh, it doesn't have to be the exact same, but it's it's, it's something. It's a public institution that's cl that's、um, close to that. So it's for democracy, for the the livelihood of the citizens. It is a necessary element in society, but we do not have that kind of consensus here in Japan. And I think what's that's an important question to ask right now. So supporting democracy, so it's it's an infrastructure, is what Mr. Letterer Letterer has said. So in that sense, what Berlin is trying to do right now, the support, the schemes that we're providing. It, we need something similar in Tokyo for newspapers, TV, journalism. Is supporting democracy. It's called the fourth、uh, authority. So in the same sense, the theater is, in a way, a place for discussion to have debates for citizens, and that's how it's, it's functioned in Europe. So if we lose that, we lose. We see the collapse of democracy. And so, but but we don't have the awareness in Japan, and then this happened. And so, I think public support, any kind of public support, is is difficult. So, what just、uh, what Tarada just shared? I think there's things that we can, he can share and he can't share. But in terms of arts and culture, so of course they will give loans, but for support. Compensation. It is difficult to to give offer a large budget. So, 
I think they won't target specifically the arts and culture, but they will target mid to small scale enterprises um, a separate kind of support uh, besides um, supporting all citizens. And that scheme will also uh, cover the arts and culture. And of course, we don't know if this will be a kind of a special uh, support scheme. But next, if this Tuesday, we'll see some kind of a scheme program proposal um, being disclosed. Um, and I think if we look at some of the documents that's going around in the L LPD, uh, we'll see what will happen. But we are, I think we're pretty sure that uh, a scheme similar to Germany and Berlin is not going to come up here in Tokyo. The, I agree with what Mr. Hirata said. One more thing that Mr. Letterer said, which I think was important, is that the economy is different. So we need a support because the system of the economy is different. And what Mr. Terada mentioned, so a lot of the politicians don't know what's happening in the arts and the entertainment sector. Mr. Letterer has said that these sectors, he, he said he said that many people don't know this, but this these industries do not render yield a lot of income. Concerts. So 20 places abroad, the artists would do a world tour. So we lose those kind of events. We lose about 100 million yen. Um, but And people are surprised that they, they make loads of money, but it's the costs. And the percentage of income is less than 10%. So, which means that the stadium, 90, over 90% 90 of it, the stadium needs to be full in order to yield some kind of income. And of course, the the working environment is very uh, difficult. So economically, it is very precarious. Of course, it, it, although it is necessary for society, the system that it's running under is very precarious. And one more thing that's different in, in terms of economy, as I mentioned in, in the beginning of this event, the, 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 the rate of refrainment in this sector, so 90 something percent, most of the events have been closed and other industries have not done the same. Um, and right now we know restaurants are still operating. So of course, you know, we can't compare and say someone has it easy than the other, but it's, it is a fact that a great amount of the organizers have refrained, they've closed, they've postponed, so a lot of them will go bankrupt. And, and from, you know, idols to live events to art, art museums, all of pe many people will have to a drop period to their activities. So that's Berlin, Germany, uh, the U.S. That is why they have they ha have decided to put forth this support. So there's a difference in economy as well. So what Mr. Letterer, Mr. Letterer said, I think, was two things that I thought were important was that the process of making decisions was very calm. So in the stage of decision making, they started with, they did a hearing with the head of large theaters, those related to different sectors. And they made, did a discussion, they came to an agreement. So, so it's not something that's done on a whim. They did it uh, with through careful consideration. And of course, because of the loss uh, incurred, they will offer some sort of, sort of support. But what's difficult here is how long is this going to last? So of course, this is just a short-term uh, measure. And once again, they'll go on to the next stage where they can think of the next measure to put forth. So the direction is clearly put forth here. And for the, the arts and culture, the people in the sectors, they are willing to cooperate when they're given these clear directions. One more thing uh, is the treatment of foreigners. Berlin is, of course, it's a unique place. There's lots of foreigners. So, and I asked if they were eligible for support, and, and Mr. Letterer has said that even if they are foreigner, if they live in Berlin, uh, they and they are active in Berlin holding events, they contribute to the diversity of the city, of course they are eligible for support. So that was his answer. So this is especially Germany, that's characteristic of Germany and Hamburg. 
Um, I created an opera at the State uh, Opera House. So I wrote and directed the and Kento Nagano was in, in charge of the, the Japanese American, um, in charge of the music, the lighting, costume. The soloists were uh, Japanese, people from Denmark and the US, and none, there was not one German, but it was a German opera. And so it was a public opera house. And their mission is to create a repertoire that is uh, contributes to the culture of civilization. So as long as they don't have to be German, but as long as they contribute to culture in Germany, is that's what's important. For example, uh, Seto Uchi International Arts Festival, um, it has um, 17 billion um, uh, economic income, yen. And uh, Mr. Fram Kitagawa was invited so they, he was asked to invite more prefectural artists. So if this is in Germany or France, if someone asked that question, uh, that uh, politician would be considered as racist. So if Urawa reads the soccer team, they had this flag of Japanese only, and that's ironic because the role of the theater is for all civilization that it's done under that premise. So as long as it follows those principles, what was very left an impression for me is that when I asked that question, they were like, of course we'll cover, we'll, we'll support foreigners. And of course, if you'd ask that, if you pursued that question uh, more strongly, you would be considered as racist, Mr. Tsuda. So it is, it's, it's a very matter of fact. So of course, I entirely asked that question thinking that that shouldn't be the case, but public using public money uh, being able to put forth that princi principle is just very impressive. Uh, the reason I asked that question was because uh, the, the contrast between the situation here in Japan, so the member of the LDP, in terms of supporting foreigners, they were, s they were reluctant to support foreigners. And they say that from the position of being a a politician, a diet member, and I thought that was problematic. One more problem is that in terms of uh, supporting artists, of course we have that issue, but it also poses the question of why we need arts and culture. So if we look at creation, Germany and, and Japan is very different in constitution. Um, protects the right to live. So that's also including the right to education and things like that, and health. Of course, we need to prioritize health right now, but the, the right to education, uh, and once the economy is under control, of course, that should be prioritized. You know, uh, if a, a state of emergency is declared, that's, uh, of course, necessary. But when we go into recovery, I think we need some level of support. So for it's also a support for artists, but it's also support for all um, citizens of Japan. So what should be supported? So right now, the right of to the right to receive culture, to enjoy culture, is being affected. So it's it, you know right now it's being perceived that artists are just demanding money because they're struggling, but that's really not the point. So for foreigner support, le Mr. Letterer mentioning that they, they will support artists, it's also a, an issue of human rights. And it's also a, a very smart strategy in terms of culture and economy. So it's, it's a cultural strategy. So because they have people of different backgrounds, it m enriches the culture of Berlin and it makes it more charming. And so in times of a difficult times, if the government does not support such people, then that is a loss on Berlin. And so because they're providing an environment where they can, where artists can comfortably be active, of course that is, you know, as a strategy economically, that really, really makes sense. So, so 
So the cultural policy is very much part of their soft power strategy, and it, 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 it constitutes the image of the city. So France uh, politicians say that because the Chanel Vuitton, the sales is contrib is is because the, of the city of Paris is a center for culture and it's a leading, it's and of course it doesn't really matter. You know Be Beckett, Samuel Beckett, and Picasso is not French, but they contributed to the image of uh, Paris and. Uh, Paris as a cultural city, and they bring all these connections as well. And so France and Germany, by by inviting uh, people like you, Mr. Harata, they, you bring connections, you bring value to the city of Par uh, these locations. So it's, it's a very smart strategy. As Hirata said before, uh, what can what city can do? Uh, we need to ensure that we have a platform for expressions. And I think that's the very heavy responsibility. But in a, uh, what's making it difficult in this coronavirus situation is that we do need to think about the infection rate, and we need to um, take measures against that. Because this um, situation about infection is still unclear, and we cannot blindly open the events and um, Places. So I thought that the Bell in Alive, the website, was a very smart um, measure as well because as a city of city uh, state, um, Berlin, um, Bell, it opens up the website um, and they can register and they can let, share the information on uh, what's going on and culturally in the city. I was also talking um, to the people at the Gate Institute that how um, uh, rich the information is. And I think that's also contributing to the soft power that we are talking about. In Japan, there is um, this kind of activities. I was um, in Totori, and I was um, talking to one of the officers, um, Hirai. And the prefecture wants to uh, support one of the cultural activities. And so local government is taking actions, and I hope that this kind of action spread. And, uh, we as people, we want to express, we want to create. At this time, the, uh, at this time of the society and at this time of the situation, maybe it's not realistic to open up the new theater, but it's always the time to think about what we can do next. It's also a chance to come up with new ideas for different expressions and events. So we should take this opportunity and this um, Berlin Alive, the website, the, the idea itself is not, not, not as new. It's worldly um, done to come up with an um, online platform and, and also like um, musicians and artists, they come up with a platform to share and they do no audience shows. Um, they also ask for donations online. But um, what is different I thought was maybe there are two things. One is that the, the local government is taking the initiative. I think it's a very brave and um, encouraging action that the city of Berlin started it. And it's nice to hear that um, Totori Prefecture, uh, Totori is doing the similar thing. And it's not only the new things, but they are also thinking about how to invest in the archives and past shows and values that they have worked on. Um, in Metropolitan um, Opera House, they are showing um, past archive videos of um, their performances for free to, for people to enjoy opera at home and British uh, Na National Fen Center and Berlin Philharmonie Orchestra. They are all offering free live concerts and shows. They're showing videos of video archives of past events. Um, they are ready to deliver because they have been invested on archiving those 
um, videos, um, video, taking the videos of the shows, and now they are um, able to offer that to the audience and possibly ask for Maybe donations and encourage want to them see to see performances and hope that the coronavirus outbreak will end. And so there, it's making people happy and also asking for support. And what is unfortunate in Japan is that um, overall events and shows, especially in theaters and performing arts, the digital archiving is still very uh, be behind. It's not very So especially active. theater, you know, it's very much about seeing it at the theater. It's not really seeing it through a video archive. Of course, people want, that's what people want. So Metropolitan Opera House, and they've been um, investing a long, for a long time to do the documenting and archive videos. And according to the questionnaires, and after looking at those archive videos, like, I about 90% want yeah, to so see the actual show. Yeah, so to bring in more people. So, um, so there are things that you can only see in the videos, like interviews um, after or before the show, and different kind of ideas can take on. So, of course, that's the efforts of the industry, but for Berlin Alive, what's great about it is that it's really an easy-to-use platform is provided by the state, and also in terms of copyright, the EU has this new rule regarding copyright. It, it was just adopted, and these digital art archives, they amended the copyright laws so that it could be, these these digital archives could be uh, archived even more. Universities right now, the ceremonies are being canceled, and people are thinking about online classes, but there's also issues with copyright. Agency so of um, Agency of Cultural Affairs, um, they are trying to encourage, they and they wanted to the public comment on the um, starting the online lectures. So that's also we want to see the progression of that. One more thing that I, because we have you, Mr. Hirata, I want to ask you. I touched on this briefly in the beginning. In Hyogo Prefecture, Toyooka, you uh, the the opening of the new theater. So in this critical situation, you decided to go ahead with the performance. And I saw your interview in the Asahi Shimbun, the Asahi newspaper. So as a community, a region, there's not a lot of uh, uh, this region is not particularly affected by the Corona outbreak and. You also mentioned that we need the power of arts in this kind of situation. And I'm sure there was very in questions at the performance of the venues. So if you could just uh, talk about this in detail. So the criticism were found on online in some phone calls. Um, people who came to the venue, they didn't have any uh, criticisms. Yesterday, um, via, um, I came to Tokyo from Totori. I was uh, I ride on the train and everything. Uh, my impression was that in Toyoka, if we took the uh, safety measures and doing the ventilation on properly and doing the show in theater, and it, it, if you compare that to riding on a crowded train in Tokyo, Tokyo is much more risky. And as um, the, the experts said that um, we should um, resume by uh, for uh, resume having events from the areas that are less affected and less risky. And uh, I am following those instructions. So um, I think the I don't think we should buy it if the um, the measurement of um, uh, this policy of reframing has to go all over the country because um, the schools are starting in the Toyoka area because um, the inf infection rate is low and they think uh, over the thorough discussion the mayor of the city decided that it's more risky to um, prevent kids going to um, 
schools. So it's better to open、um, schools again, because、um, even if they close, shut down the schools, kids play outside together with close contact, and it's better to keep them safe and、um, under control in school. So the situations vary in every、um, every different places. So in Toyooka, there there is some outbreak of the coronavirus or ev events. Is there a support scheme in terms of Berlin?、Uh, if there was a support scheme, the I guess yes, the conclusion、course. would have been different. Yeah, because I did cancel other events. I did cancel other shows in different areas. I I was also to gonna open up a new show in Koenji in Tokyo. I cancelled that. So it's not that I do everything. In the interview the other day、um, from a newspaper, and the reporter was a journalist was asking, "Is it a pride thing?" And I said, "No, clearly not." So for the organizers. They're having forced to make these very difficult decisions, so there's that risk of decision as well, and they're they're made to take all the responsibility for those decisions. And here in、uh, Mr. Hirata's, we have to、um, fight against Corona, and there are different perspectives. We have to defeat it somehow. So、um, taking on. And try to limit the number of risks,、uh, social risks. It's of course have, we have to take the measures. But in the time of the war, we、um, it's hard to make decisions. We have to be smart to defeat.、Um, it's it's like a war. So. Um, um, so trying to be patient or trying to give up everything is not always the best way to go about it. We cannot、um, defeat something, or we cannot come on,、um, get on,、um, overcome the war if we try to、um, avoid everything and give up on everything. So we have to come up with a very、um, the most effective measures. And to keep fighting, so that we don't lose our motivations and energy, so that we can keep fighting this situation. So it's not my、um, my own decision. I hear, I listen to the experts and different opinions. In the Osaka,、uh, in the university in Osaka, I. Also work as、uh, coming out with lectures and programs with the scientists, and I talk to the students that、uh, there is no such thing as a zero risk. If you want to、um, defeat the、um, infection or prevent the infection, maybe you can put everyone in houses. In houses, but there are other risks raising because、um, people get frustrated in houses. So if you try to、um, If you try to get rid of the risks,、uh, other risks arise. So this is a very important way of thinking,、uh, or this is very important idea to think on, especially in the scientific、um, programs. So this、um, equal、um, self-restraint thing doesn't work. So, for, of course, it's correct to ask for a refrain, a refrainment in this time of crisis. But if we do this for a very long time, it's going to take a toll on the the economy. But it could also、um, result in many deaths. So th both arguments are correct in 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 this kind of trade-off. What kind of decisions do we make? So th those decisions may be need to be made by politicians under their own responsibility. But of what I'm seeing now, in terms of seeing the the press conferences and things like that, those decisions is not enough. Yes. So, so speaking of the school closure and shutdown, and it, they, that they did it all over the country. And、uh, the the prime minister、uh, said、uh, specifically said that they didn't、uh, talk to the experts, and that's a very、uh, negative side of the government right now. When the prime minister says something, everyone involved have to follow that.、Um, 
follow the words and they start、um, amending different things to follow the what he、so、said. So politicians may be making strategic decisions in the West, Europe, and U.S. So seeing the cultural support that's being given in the West. So we talked a lot about Germany today, but in the United States, for example. So they offered a two trillion dollar uh, economic uh, stimulus package, and that also covers the arts. The U.S. they have a lot of support from the private sectors, so they have they have lots of donations through taxes. So they usually donated two trillion dollars in the first place、um, from a very、uh, well-to-do people, but in addition. This economic stimulus package, so so for nonprofit arts、uh, activities, they have about twenty、um, billion dollars worth of support, and in the UK, there's more support. So twenty-one, twenty-one point two billion.、Uh, Dollars.、Uh, this to offer to free freelancers. They're also ensuring,、uh, guaranteeing 80 percent of、uh, wages.、Uh, freelancers as well. They can receive 330,000 uh, yen. And that's the upper limit because if that doesn't happen, pubs, restaurants, theaters will have. Without that kind of support, cannot be completely closed, and without that, we cannot curb the corona outbreak. So we need they need to make sure that there's no chain reaction of bankruptcies. So we they need they're trying to be strategic and efficient in their support of、uh, what Mr. Harata mentioned. So in Japan, where there's lots of peer pressure. In Japanese society, of course, you know they don't have the idea that support is necessary in terms when、uh, refreement is、um, uh, is requested. So in like the K1 event that that was mentioned, you know,、um, things go bankrupt. So K1 only were was forced to go through with this event、um, in order to not go bankrupt. I'm not saying it was the right decision, but if we force people, if we Um, corner people. There's、uh, these kinds of things en、um, ha- end up happening, and that can be a ripple effect to other、um, restaurants and very small shops、um, that can so easily go are, bankrupt. Yeah, so people who are in、uh, precarious positions, they need to to continue operations.、Uh, cultural policy is not about logic; it is very much affected by its history, its social atmosphere. America is a new country that's created by the people. So the way they use their taxes, they have, th- and also pr- Protestantism is very much in effect. Germany, uh, Germany, uh, Berlin is. Quite、uh, special. Other cities,、uh, the public, the the public sector is very strong. Hamburg、um, has public、uh, institutions. There's about 700, 800 employees. So if if they close operations, they still have jobs. So they're doing maintenance. They're doing cleanup. So and of course they have insurance. France is very much about individualism. Everyone is a freelancer, but They have an anti-mitan、uh, insurance policy.、Um, so if they work about 800 to 1,900 hours, even if the months they they don't work, they receive about 200,000 yen worth of、uh, money. So France is very clear in their policy. So if people who have、um, ability. So if people choose to go to into other sectors because of economic reasons, that's a loss on them. So if artists do a certain amount of work, they can continue to be artists. So depending on the country, the background is different in terms of economy, culture, and religion. We need to create that kind of policy in terms of Japan, and Japan has a very precarious system. And then the coronavirus outbreak hit. So, so we can, I I think we need to have a strategy. You know, we don't have. The、enough so, strategy through、so、this event, we need to think about individual support. Also, midterm 
uh, support to maintain that environment. And long term, we need to think about the policy surrounding culture. So it needs to be in about three stages. Uh, take take this opportunity to have discussions regarding that. So today uh, we've been having this discussion, and it's broadcast online. And we are asking for questions. So let me introduce the questions that I got. One is about the cool Japan policy. Where is headed to? Um, today's talk is about the cultural policy in time of crisis. So I think we um, they want to hear more. So as the um, people who a uh, person who asked the question said, this um, contents industry it's going to be very important. Big. I think that the people in the financial sector they also know, but in the education. Um, there is, you know, that um, application science doesn't um, come out from the very um, without having the basic education. So the contents don't um, cannot be born without having this basic education, and so the only the contents were only dependent on the private um, people. And in Korea, and the and money that they put into in the uh, film industry is um, very much more than Japan and, um, when you uh, when you compare Korea. And um, so the the support is um, in in Korea. The actors and other performers are supported by the government, but um, in Japan, everyone everything was dependent on the private uh, money. So we this is a time to come up with the public support for the culture and arts. I want to ask Mr. Fukui about uh, cultural policy. So the amount of money that's used per person in terms of culture is very low. So it's a fifth, about fifth, a fifth of South Korea. And so the Agency for Cultural Affairs, it's not even a ministry yet. So we spend about one trillion yen for to build roads, but there's a question of why there's a such a small budget towards the arts and culture. So, so. The cultural policy we have, uh, which has been given to very much the responsibility of the private sector, um, the public, the it hasn't been funded from the public, uh, um, the p and with public money. So as uh, Mr. Hirata said, um, yes, um, everything was put on to the um, private sectors, and as we said, um, as we talked in America, they don't have much of the public fundings because uh, private and um, private enterprises support those movement, but it 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 is in a way that the com country is supporting that because. Um, and the enterprises are paying the tax, and they're collecting. Uh, the country is collecting the tax, but they're um, they're ha they're just requiring low tax so that the private enterprises can support the artists and the arts. Um, how that's the American way of doing uh, supporting the artists. And in Europe, uh, on the other hand, the public sector has a very important role to uh, support those artists from the taxes that they collect from the citizens, maybe 10 times more or um, many times more. And that's one strategy. So what about Japan? And Japan, uh, you know, they only know are aware that oh, like cultures in Japan are apparently popular, um, but they don't have any strategy, uh, national strategy, and it's it became only popular because of the private sectors and the um, individual artists, um, uh, comic, cartoon, comic um, writer who worked in a very small apartment became very popular in Europe and and it's it's like that for every single um, genres of art including like Oriza's work and and when it, when it comes to this situation in the coronavirus um, we don't have this uh, national strategy for any of that 
and it's, um, we, I also talked with the government officials and also the uh, this person involved in um, business and he is involved in the show business and um, it's called 2.5 dimension theater it's uh, one of the leading um, cultural um, and cultural shows in uh, on the uh, subculture and cool Japan, but he he also feels very lonely without any support from public sectors. So this is really the time to think about what kind of strategy Japan wants to take on. It can be either public or private. So in the comments. So the right to receive culture. There's the right for sovereignty. So Toyoka City is similar to Berlin's strategy, but the right to govern, to make decisions. So we have the Ministry of Culture in Germany. From what I know, in Europe, it is the it is the last country that created a position for uh, Minister of Culture. It comes from it's influenced by Nazism. So the, uh, they wanted to avoid the state being directly involved in the culture. So that's why they give so much uh, sovereignty to the state. So it's not very much connected to the nation. In Toyooka, from the beginning, we, t we thought of thought of things from the global perspective, not from the standards of Tokyo. So Takao Saito, um, who, who, who did a speech, um, it, it's a very much rebellious region, and so they won't accept um, the principles of the uh, the country, but when there's only a population of 180,000 people, we don't have lots of specialist uh, knowledge or um, data, so it's really hard to come up with our own strategies and principles. But on, in that way, if you talk about culture in Japan, people often say that don't bring in politics in culture. But actually, culture is strongly tied with politics. Exactly. So historical background, religious background has minus effects as well. Japan, the reason why we don't have a clear cultural policy is because Japan and Japanese society, we have we've never been our language or, or culture has never been taken away so we are in a perfect uh, uh, position so countries that have been colonized for example or their borders have changed for example in europe in places like that culture is the identity of the people so when that goes too far it becomes nationalism so that needs to also need to be controlled and they need a cultural policy for that. So it's you know a crystallization of all the knowledge that they have accumulated, but that we don't have that in Japan. So it's a question of how do we create that here in Japan? One more question. So in Japan, the don't so the Japan shouldn't we think that delivering the message or the culture from Japan to overseas cannot be the value for the country? Do you uh, do you think that um, culture and arts should be cut um, at first because it's not essential to for life? So I'm going to answer the second question first. The past few days I've been been asked been asked the same questions. What I say a lot is life is important for everyone. So in order to protect health, we will comply with the government. But the next thing that's important next to life is different for everyone. So there's people that are safe from theater. There's people who are um, supported by music, sports. And so what we prioritize, what we think is important, I think we need to understand that and be accepting of each other. So it's it shouldn't really be about, you know, how we can persevere all this but once we right now we need to persevere, but maybe after this maybe we can go see a baseball match, we can go to the theater. So that kind of sense of solidarity is very important. And because we're in this high stress situation, not everyone, I think everyone is under a lots of distress and that's very dangerous. So 
If we kind of lose that, that element that's energizing these people, it's going to be an economic damage. So we need to some, to some extent kind of maintain arts and culture. And so in this coronavirus situation, we don't know when it's going to come to end. And ev everyone is under pressure and very getting on. So, but so um, this concern about corona, um, it's, it should be about the disease, but um, the, the concern becomes toward the people. Disseminating Japanese culture, the Olympics, which has been postponed, the Olympics-related cultural events, it didn't succeed as much as the London Olympics cultural events. So there's a premise that a Japanese culture is amazing, therefore we need to disseminate it. But in Germany, the theaters there, it's important. It doesn't really matter who is making the works. Uh, what's, what's amazing is amazing. So in Japan, it doesn't even be, need to be made in Japan, but if the Japan Foundation, if they make something in Bangkok, that's still, you know, they can be using actors and staff from uh, f with foreign people, but if it's if Japan is contributing to that, that's Japanese culture. So it's it's something that needs to be shared, but on a global level, that's the basic strategy for the arts. So when we when it's just the emphasis on nationalism, it doesn't work very well. So, so two things that you pointed out, um, disseminating the value of culture and cutting down the culture. I think the questions are very important. And my impression is that maybe you don't feel this way, but after Corona, it it will come. May, it's hard to believe, but it will come, the post-corona time. And when that time comes, um, everything will be shut down and gone. It's going to be very hard to survive. If, if we, uh, we will realize how important it is, the culture we have and the arts we have, uh, the tourists coming into Japan were the proof. Uh, everyone like coming from um, students, international students coming to Japan to study, they all, always talk about comics and cultures of Japan. And that was what um, was attracting people to Japan. And if we don't have that after Corona, how are we going to uh, overcome this? How are we going to go through this? So despite the situation, other countries are very much working to making efforts. So it's, it's such a different contrast. So it's also the same uh, for the mindset because um, culture might not, um, there are, it's a saying that uh, culture is not essential for life, but I think it is essential and vital for our life. And because and there are people who are dependent, whose life is dependent on culture and art, and for them to survive, we cannot get rid of them. And also, so when we say the arts, it just sounds very exalted. But everyone is receiving art, right? If we go to karaoke and if we de-stress, that is that music is being played by some instrument and it's put into notation. So if we, it's the crystallization of um, ma uh, mass culture, uh, history of music. So, uh, so, so you know, basic research and cutting edge research. It's hard to see. It's the same for science. So if we look at astrology, um, the research of molecules, it can be something that can be beneficial in the, in a hundred years into the future. In television, you see famous actors, popular actors. Um, peop those people are most likely from the small theaters, and they were living in those small theaters until about like 30s, and they were having hard times uh, making their lives. And like for example, Shiga Kotaro, and he became famous when he was 40. So even if you don't know, even if you don't see, these things are the fundamentals of our society. 
and this actually shapes the society. So on the other hand, if we, if we look at things other than culture, what has what has survived is culture. So, so, so Italy, the, the reason I collapsed was because they limited the health budget for um, uh, the U.S. citizens. 40 million people do not have health insurance. So this kind of tendency creates a very precarious situa uh, situation, and I think people need to be really aware of that. So from here, how do we rebuild society from in, in the matter of life, uh, life and death? In Europe, um, people have to stay home, and um, some people are experiencing domestic violence or in danger of um, sexual harassment and sexual violence. And talking about life and death in Japan, um, the, the um, amount the Amazon and bookstores, um, they're selling a lot. And people go, actu people go, um, they, they go insane if they actually stay home all the time. And it's actually culture and arts that can keep people from being sane. Especially the stress level of children is very high. So there's cultural policies that we can put forth in force right now. So uh, Agency for Cultural Affairs, MEXT, can buy books and they can distribute those books to families because they're having a really hard situation, especially with, s with small kids. They usually rent books, 20 to 30 books, and if they can have access to the library, especially for kids who can't uh, speak yet, it's a lot of stress for them, so we need to, you know, we need to take action. Yeah, we have to do, we ha have to start from things we can do. Well, the time is almost up, so um, the theme is the cultural policy in the time of crisis, and when you compare it to Europe and the, and the States, Japan um, is very behind. We don't have the very clear policy yet for against the coronavirus. But um, to just to close up, um, I want to ask you to: What is the emergency cultural policy that is need to be taken right now, and also the middle to long term policies that needs to come up? So there's a couple. So I've been consulting. So even for the young artists, I'm wondering if they can be supported from uh, the end of uh, April. I want to start crowdfunding. So for the, the young um, theaters, uh, maybe 200,000 to 450,000 yen. Um, they can it, that can help them uh, go through this time on a short-term basis for mid-term basis. I talked to the governor of Totori Prefecture, um, and we also have a festival theater festival in, in September. And so maybe they can prioritize and invite the theaters that had to cancel um, their their performances but, and they can maybe pay in advance and uh, they can use it for anything especially um, of course that doesn't happen usually but um, they can and help that to repay their debts because their place for expression has been taken away you know there's lots of works that's been created but there's no a place to present it and a theater especially is hard inter to postpone so they can you know prioritize these uh, theaters in these kind of situations and I and uh, the mayor of Toyoka has agreed the governor has agreed of course uh, the premise is that the corona will die down soon enough but it will still go on for a little bit longer so so we need to prioritize those places that um, don't have a lot of infections or that have recovered even if there's a lockdown and if the factories are closed, someone needs to create masks, someone needs to create um, al um, alcohol for disinfection. So uh, we need to utilize diversity in terms so that we can back up and help these situations. So I, we're, I want to serve as a, a backup system from where I am, and that's where we're putting our efforts towards. Uh, we, I got a question on Twitter. Um, I'm surprised with the policies in Berlin, and is there anything we can do? We can do similar in Japan, and in terms of cultural policy, um, it really um, very much dependent on the the governors and lo local governors. It's not a, it's not so much of the budget compared to the other budget. 
So um, uh, different local governments can take on different soft power measures to invite artists, and invite performers, and maybe that can end up inviting them to live in those places in the, each areas. And so the local governors they can think about different things to come up and put forth their characteristic if they put into their strategy. So the Nova City Mayor, Mr. Kamara, it wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking of when to bring that up. Basically, uh, from the perspective of artists, uh, we were saying that we can't work with Nagoya City. A lot of young theater makers say that. Uh, so citizens might work. <laughs> so even if we prepare, if there's a risk that it's, it'll be cancelled, we can't take that risk. That's a very practical decision, judgment. Yeah, so the, the, that, that individual has kind of ruin, ruined the, the image of Nagoya. I re, yeah, we really understand that from experience. So Mr. Fukui, so if you could kind of talk about short-term and long-term policies that um, can be put forth. So in the short term, what we can do, we need to start right on. I think this is the key. And in this respect, the live events and cultural policy, um, policies, I said that this is very weak in Japan. But I think there are things that needs to that can be very strong. So I need to take that back half of it. Because um, those people working in those sectors, uh, they are they have the ability to live with a very little amount of money. They have the skills to survive. If they have this very little money, they can do so many things. And this is the strength of the art and culture sector. They are so good at it. So we are able to find things that what we can do. But what we need for that is the support. We do need national governmental support, public support, because we cannot live, we cannot continue to live, and we, can, we will go bankrupt, and it will be like a ripple effect. So the emergency and allowance and, and compensation is strongly needed. And in a longer term, let's think about post-corona different hopes and different things we can come up with, but uh, we will have other um, in infections, diseases, and we, we can, after corona, we cannot think of arts and culture without having uh, thinking about the risk of having infection diseases. And we cannot repeat the same thing. Are we going to repeat saying, no, we don't have the insurance to cover up the cultural sector? Um, now they said that they say that private uh, institutions cannot be covered in insurance. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to come up with a new insurance system to um, prepare for the future cultural art sections um, post-corona? Thank you very much. So in the two hours, we looked at the examples of different countries. Uh, we think we were able to listen and hear a lot of details about the policy in Berlin. We also talked extensively. Uh, we were able to see what we can do here in Japan. I Last year, I had the experience of the Aichi Triennale. Um, I think I, us I, I think to the governor Omura. So he was saying that, you know, we will fund it, but we won't uh, intervene. And he's been repeating that for a long time. And even if, the, what, uh, despite what happened, he kind of stuck with what he said. He will, he said he will provide money, uh, but uh, he, they will not intervene. And I think what his words kind of have a new meaning in this kind of Kona outbreak situation. Um, our situation is changing daily. Um, where you, we are on the verge of a lockdown here in Tokyo. So in this kind of situation, 
and、um, the situation for, in terms of events, whether we cancel, postpone, will be different. It will change every week. And these things won't be picked up in、uh, nationwide broadcasting. And I'm very happy that I was able to have this opportunity、uh, in this forum, and we'll have、uh, more editions of this particular series. And I hope, hope to have further discussions surrounding this. Thank you so much, Mr. Harata. Thank you so much,、uh, Mr. Fukui. So,、uh, Studio 22X,、uh, Culture Policy、um, in the Time of Crisis. Uh, we do have a second edition of the series, uh, but um, we don't know in what, what form it will be delivered, but we are hoping to make that happen. We will、uh, make announcements on the details once it is confirmed. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Thank you, Mr. Ariza, Mr. Fukui.